I've been complaining about Major League Baseball for a while now, but I've always been told if you don't have solutions, then don't complain. So here are the steps I would take to make Major League Baseball the best sport in the world. Hey guys, it's Josh, and I need to know it all. Coming to you today to talk about my fixes for Major League Baseball. Now, my things aren't out outrageous. It's not like free games for everybody, that type of stuff. But I do have some things that I think are realistic, could be done, and really should be done by Major League Baseball. But before we jump into that, guys, take a moment. Please subscribe to the channel. It lets you know when new videos come out. With the season up and running right now, we've got lots of interviews coming out. We've got videos from games and just lots of discussions about what's going on in baseball across the country and, and even in the Northwest where I'm at. So guys, subscribe, it helps me out, let you know when videos are coming out. But let's jump into my fixes. If I was the commissioner of Major League Baseball, what things would I do to improve the game or make changes that would improve the strength of the fan base? Now, they've already done some things that I like and enjoy, and I think are positive moves. I think putting up the netting further down along the first and the third baseline is a smart move and a good move for Major League Baseball. The reason I say that is because then families feel safer. They feel like they can buy tickets down in that area and not be afraid of injuries. Now, yes, pop-ups still happen up over the net, come down, but those are not nearly as dangerous or as harmful as those 100, 105 mile per hour line drives coming off the bat. So I'm glad they're putting the netting up. I'm okay with it. One of my favorite minor league ball port, ballparks is the Eugene Emeralds. And the entire main seating area is behind a net. And I can see the game just fine. It's a little harder for photography, uh, obviously because the camera tries to focus on the net and then the player back and forth. Uh, but they have other areas where you can stand into the kind of like a little photo well, that type of stuff that you can do. But I like being there. I like the fact that I can take uh, my wife and daughters and I can sit back and relax. Uh, I can go to the concession stands or the bathroom and not have to worry about them, you know, dodging balls and stuff like that. Now, Eugene Emeralds, it could bounce off the club area and back down. I've seen it hit people before doing that, but that's a whole different thing. You can avoid that. You can dodge that. You can pay attention to that. Um, line drives, you can't. You know, even the most skilled players, you can't, it's hard to move out of the way of a line drive as fast as those guys hit it. So I'm glad they're putting the nets up. That's good. Moving on. Here are the things that they haven't done that they really need to do. First thing, right off the bat, is Major League Baseball, when it comes to marketing their best players and their highlights on like social media, that type of stuff, is atrocious. It's it's horrible. In fact, they pretty much, if you try and share stuff on social media, like the highlights and stuff, they pretty much try and try and stop you and try and block you from doing that. So where the NBA, you know, something happens and boom, social media just blows up. NFL, same thing. It doesn't happen for Major League Baseball. It's it's almost non-existent in a lot of ways. Other than people recording stuff with their own phone, you don't get a lot of highlights being pumped out there by Major League Baseball. And it's sad. That's one of the reasons why we don't really have the superstars that other sports do because we're just not promoting the players, not promoting the plays well enough. And I blame that on Major League Baseball. You know, they have some good accounts that do a good job. Cut4 is one of the best Twitter accounts, period, across sports, across anything. They're hilarious. They're a ton of fun. I love it. But I wish that Major League Baseball would allow for more content to be put out there to really promote the players. I mean, really, Mike Trout should be on a tweet every single day on every Major League account that they have talking about what he did the night before. Even if he struck out swinging, show the pitcher and how they got the best hitter in the game out. I mean, promote the players. Promote what's going on. Get it out there. That's something that Major League Baseball does not do. They need to start doing it 10, 15 times more than they already do to make it really effective and really grow the game. Number two, I would get rid of the stupid blackout rules that they have for MLB TV. Those rules are just mind-boggling bad. Because you got people who live, well, here, the newest one. If you live in Canada, you cannot watch Toronto Blue Jays games. 
if you live in Vancouver, BC, which is way over here near where I live on the on the west coast, Toronto, which is on the east coast, what that's an eight hour flight. I mean, an eight hour flight, but you're in their region. You cannot watch Toronto Blue Jays games unless you have a special subscription to the uh, provider that that who covers the Blue Jays. That's horrible. That's horrible. You shouldn't be on the opposite side of the country and not be able to watch a team because you're in their region. That's not how it works. That, that should not be how it works. That's, that's pathetic. I mean, it's truly pathetic, which also means I'm willing to bet the people in Vancouver, BC can't watch Mariner stuff either because I can't. And I live two and a half hours away, which is not a quick little jump. You know, it takes a little while to get up there, but I can't watch Mariner games. Uh, people in Spokane, which is like five hours away, can't watch it. People in Idaho, who are even farther away, can't watch Mariner games because they're technically in their region. Now, I only have the Mariners in the Northwest for me. You know, it's my team, but I can't watch them. Imagine living in the a more populated area in which you've got multiple cities around you within range, but still not close, and you can't watch any of them. You know, I know there are individuals who live in Iowa who can't watch Cardinals games, can't watch Royals games, they can't watch Cubs, they can't watch the White Sox, they can't watch all these different teams because of where they live, even though they're not anywhere really close to any of those teams. So the blackout rules have got to go, they've got to disappear. That alone would drive a lot of people to buying the subscription to Major League TV. I mean, it, they just would. I stopped doing it because I can't watch the Mariners. They're my local team. That's who I want to watch. So if I can't watch them, what's the point? What's the point of paying the money to watch other teams when I cannot watch the team I want to watch? Now, yes, I love baseball. I loved watching the other teams the last few years. But when it comes July, early August, I get kind of tired of not being able to watch the team that I've followed as the guys who've gone through the minors and the draft picks and all that stuff. I can't follow all of them. So I kind of just tune out and not really watch games as much. So I know for some people it's still worth it. For me, it wasn't. And I know for other people, it's not worth it for them either. So number three, this one's personal, near and dear to me. Major League Baseball needs to promote and encourage independent media like bloggers and YouTubers really like me. Now this is, once again, this is kind of a selfish thing. I am a blogger, got 90 know it all site. Obviously I'm doing YouTube stuff but they don't promote or encourage people to do this. Um, in fact, they, once again, they try and block content a lot of times and that hurts the game because this is free advertising for Major League Baseball when they have people like me who are talking about the game, talking about what's going on in the game, just being all involved in that type of stuff. I mean, look at like the movie industry. Now I love watching a lot of the YouTubers in the movie industry. Uh, John Campia, and then you have Denim Nerds and things like that. I love watching those things, and that is just free marketing for movies that are coming out across the board uh, because they're talking about it. They're talking about things they like, things they don't like, things that they're excited about, and it gets people like me excited for the movies as well. And Major League Baseball needs to do a similar thing. They need to encourage the people who are out here like me creating free content so that they can get excited about the game. Now, there's still a place for like The Athletic, you know, where you have some of the best sports writers in the country, all with one website. They have a subscription feed. That's fine. That's needed. That is a great place for the top writers. But you also need to encourage the free sites, the sites that just want to promote the game and talk about the game. And that's something that if they did more of, I think it would help the game. Now, they kind of did something like this. A number of years back, like 2012, 2013, where if you were a part of WordPress and you had the MLB um, format for your, your page, you could be included into uh, the top 100 sites of the year. That They would take your stats and then put you into, you know, ranking you by how many views you had. And then you'd be ranked, I think I was ranked uh, 21st one year, I think that was 2013, like 43rd in 2012. So that was cool. It was exciting. It got me excited. It's one of the reasons why I really pushed harder for 90 and all to be more. But then I realized that being connected to that site was actually hindering me and hurting me more than if I cut bait, 
went my own way and did what I'm doing now. So if they promoted that and encouraged more people to really do what I'm doing, it would be a helpful, a big thing for the game. I mean, I'm covering colleges that really don't get coverage other than me and occasionally local newspapers. And I say occasionally um, because, you know, I'm at lower Columbia games all the time and there'll be reporters out there once in a while, but they're covering high school games. They're covering other things, other sports. So for them to get covered on a constant, regular basis, it's individuals like me who are out doing that. So they need to pr promote that, encourage that, push it out there, get more content out there. And I don't know how you promote or encourage people like me, but they've got to find a way to do that. Number four, I've talked about ticket prices time and time again, but for most of the ballparks, and I'll say most, once again, LA, New York, this really doesn't apply to them. They still sell out all the time. So their prices are pretty right on the money. Um, if you're selling 80% of your tickets per game on average, then you're pretty much in a good zone price-wise uh, for your market. But for most teams, they are way overpriced. The Seattle Mariners are extremely overpriced. Their team stinks. I know it's rebuilding, and they've got some great young players in the minor league system. They're not at the major league level yet. So you can't even go watch these young guys because they're not even there yet. And they're charging prices that are just too high. Too high for a team that hasn't made the playoffs in 19 years. It's just too high. So teams need to lower prices to draw in families and draw in baseball fans and the casual fans. Because when you get the casual fans in, they're there not to necessarily watch a game, but they're there to socialize, buy a beer, buy a burger, that type of stuff. There's money in the casual fan. That's where a lot of money is made when you bring them in, but you gotta give good ticket prices. Now I will say, Tampa Bay Rays, they've been doing some stuff lately, lowering the prices, giving some special uh, ticket programs they've got, pretty cool. I would admit, if I had a team up here in the Northwest that I was closer to, uh, like if Portland were to get a team, which I'm kinda hoping they do still, and they had the similar ticket packages to what Tampa Bay is doing, I'd probably be on board with it. I think Tampa Bay has uh, standing room only, for all their home games for $36 a month. $36 a month is not, it's nothing. I mean, for games, that's really nothing, especially if you can get to like 10, 12 games in a month. That's a great deal. That's a great deal. And standing room only, once again, we all know what that means. It means if there's no one in a section, you go sit in that section. If not, you go find the rail, lean against the rail and watch the game. I can deal with that. I usually, all the games I cover now, I don't go sit down. I'm usually standing next to the dugout or down the right field or left field line. So I don't sit anyway. So I'm fine with that. It'd be a good deal for me. So lower ticket prices, give better packages, draw the fans in. You draw the fans in, they buy food, they buy drinks, they buy merchandise, they spend money. That's what's important. Next thing I would do, number five, you hear it all the time. I would pay minor league baseball players better. Right now, minor league baseball players get paid, I think it's like $400 a week. That's not great. So that's about $1,600 a month. And a lot of people say, well, that's enough to live on. Not really, because you got to pay your clubhouse fees, which are, I think, like $150 or $200. Um, you got to pay each month. So that takes a big chunk out. Then you got to try and pay for a place to stay, for food. If you have a vehicle, you got to pay for gas. It's just, it's not enough money. And the biggest negative I have about minor league baseball when they're, they're paying is they don't get paid during spring training. They get paid nothing, nothing at all during spring training and really nothing at all in the fall. So you have guys who you want to be the best athletes possible, but you're paying them so little that they're surviving on peanut butter and jelly and top ramen. Is that what you want your best athletes to eat and try and get stronger on? Because if that's what you're, you're hoping for, a lot of guys bail out, not because they don't have talent, but because they want to go get food, real food. They want to have a real job that pays them money. So my recommendation is, if you have a guy in your system, the very lowest level gets 24000 a year, period, for the whole year, 24000 That covers them during the off-season, covers them during spring training, during the season, off-season. That gives them plenty of money to, to find an apartment, have a roommate or two, which I have no problem with guys doing that to, to save money. I encourage them 
especially when you're away from home, away from family, have a roommate, save some money, but it lets them have money to buy real food, have real meals. And then during the off season, when they're not playing, that continues to pay them and you can tell them, hey, here's your job. It's to get stronger, to lift weights every day. You have to go through this workout regimen, this. If you're paying them year round, you can have far more control over their workout regimens, what they're doing. So instead of having major league players come in 50 pounds heavier than they were last year because they sat on the couch all winter long eating, you now have guys who are coming in who have been working out five days a week, eating right, getting stronger, and getting better. If the first team that does that, the first Major League Baseball team that decides, hey, we're going to pair guys year-round and give them full workout regimens and stuff like that, that minor league system is going to be just, it's going to take off. They're going to be stronger, faster, better than other teams. And, you know, that's a chance to win championships through the minor league system. And when you win, winning is contagious. It helps your Major League team. So that's my thought. Okay, number six, and this one's kind of a fun one. I've really liked what the other sports have done with their all-star weekends. Yes, they have their their Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl game, their all-star game for the NBA. They have those things, but more of their focus is skills competition. They've been putting a lot of effort, time, and energy into their skills competition, and I love it. I love watching the hockey stuff where they're speed skating around, trying to see who's the fastest, trying to break the plates around the goal. I love the football stuff they did this year with you know, trying to hit certain receivers at certain points and you've got defenders trying to block certain targets and that type of stuff. I think that's fun. So I would say keep the home run derby because let's be honest, the home run derby might be one of the best baseball events, period, across any level, anything. I love the home run derby. But add in other stuff. Add in some other fun technique and skills-based competitions um, and see what happens. I mean, have, an, have the outfielders throw to home and put a bucket and see if they can get it into the bucket i would have loved to have seen each row in his prime being given a a three by three target at home plate to see if he could hit it on the fly or one hop because let's be honest you know he could hit it from anywhere on the field he could drill that all day long and i would love to see it it'd be awesome to see the ball just drill like a board or something just here's boom that's what the all-star game should be about about fun exciting things like that i would love a skills competition you know, it just, it just seems like a no-brainer to me. But Major League Baseball has to have a brain to be able to figure these things out. Hopefully they will at some point. It's fun. I think these things would be fun. I think a, a skills competition would draw in a lot of fans, a lot of younger fans especially, to, to see what these guys are capable of, to see how fast they are. I'd love to see guys like Billy Hamilton and Dee Gordon starting at home plate and seeing just how fast they are around the bases. How fast could they fly around all of all the bases and score and have that pumped up time wise. I think that'd be fun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So guys, those are just my thoughts. I know they're not, you know, major ice breaking thoughts. A lot of people have had ideas like this before, but it's something that I think if major league baseball took serious and they started doing these six things, I think the impact across the game would be, would be huge. I think it would make a, big difference. I think it would draw fans in. It would draw in the casual fan, once again, who has money. So that's just my thoughts. So guys, I'm Josh. I'm the Nine Noodle. Thanks for tuning in for a little bit. This is my thoughts. If you have thoughts, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. But guys, I will talk to you later.